Attention, pilots, for Uncle Ned's Squad Drive. <laughs> Stand by for phone calls, model planes, a jackpot question, a U-controlled gas-powered plane, an exciting story, and fun for everyone. Here's the man now to get things underway, your commanding officer, Uncle Ned. Hi, pilots. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome to another squadron meeting. I wonder if our jackpot question will be answered today. Well, we'll soon find out, but now let's get started with our official slogan. You cadets at home, yell right along with us. Here we go. Look! You sounded like a flight of Corsairs. And now here's a sharp cadet with something important to say. He's our executive officer for the day. Co-pilot Ferguson, will you introduce him? It's a pleasure, Uncle Ned. Our executive officer today is an old-timer. His name is David Harrell, and he lives at 166 West Chicago Avenue in Chicago. Executive Officer Harrell, read the orders of the day for the squadron. Order number one is join the squadron if you are any member. Order number two is pay attention to the story in the hangar flying and try to win some model planes. The third order is to be sure and accomplish the mission for the week. Boy, oh boy, you should see these swell planes. That is all. Executive Officer Dave Harrell, you read those orders like a good pilot, and here's a plane for you that you'll like. It's a plastic Hiller Hornet, an exact model of the famous Hiller jet helicopter. Build it and put it on your dresser. Now, Dave, tell me how many cadets in the ready room have had rides in real planes? Sixteen cadets have been up in real planes, Uncle Ned. Say, we've got a lot of high flyers on hand this morning. I want to talk to one who had a real good ride. Who will it be, Co-Pilot Ferguson? Well, here's your man, Uncle Ned. His name is David Russo, and he lives at 750 Junior Terrace in Chicago. He had a good ride, and he'd like to tell you about it. David Russo, meet Uncle Ned. Dave, how are you? I'm glad you could come to the ready room this morning. Now, tell me about your ride. What kind of a plane did you fly in? We flew in a DC-6. In a DC-6? Hey, a lot of our cadets have had rides in DC-6s, and they can't ride in a finer aeroplane either. Where did you go, Dave? From California to Catalina Island. From California to Catalina Island. Boy, that's a wonderful trip across the water, isn't it? When did you take the flight? When I was eight years old in... Eight years old? Well, how old are you now? Eleven. Eleven, about three years ago. Tell me, what did you see that you'll always remember? Anything outstanding? Well, the islands look pretty small, and they look soft. A lot of trees and mountains, they look very nice. Uh, isn't, it, yeah. isn't it wonderful, though? Have you ever traveled any other way that you could see more? No, I don't think so. Isn't that swell? Well, I'm glad you had a good ride. Thanks for telling me about the fun you had, and here's something that'll give you more fun. It's an all-metal skyroplane, the plane that sounds like a bomber, and the plane that'll fly in any kind of weather. It's complete with rod and reel for your enjoyment. Thank you, Dave. Boys and girls, the trying has been taken out of flying. Now it's a fast, restful way to get from one place to another. As you grow up, the aeroplane will play an important part in your life. Keep an eye on the sky. This is F-74 to UNS Control Tower. F-74 to UNS Control Tower. Over. This is Uncle Ned in UNS Control Tower. Go ahead, F-74. F-74 to Uncle Ned. F-74 to Uncle Ned. What's the mission for the week? What's the mission for the week? All pilots stand by. The mission for the week is be careful near water. Well, it's just about time for swimming and waiting, and it's time for caution. Be careful near water. If you can't swim, don't go near the water alone. And even if you can swim, don't swim when you're all alone. Little ponds and pools may not look deep, but unless you're sure about them, be careful. Don't be afraid of water, but don't dare the water either. Be careful when you're near it. This mission is important for your safety pilots. It's be careful near water. Pilots, what's the mission for the week? Be careful near water! Remember the mission and be sure to accomplish it. Every week, our chief navigator, John Cowan, calls two members of the squadron on the phone and asks them what the mission is. 
During the past week, he called Richard Korolek of 2454 North Marmora Avenue in Chicago and Nancy Miller of 7354 South California Avenue, also in Chicago. Both cadets knew the mission and they both won model planes. You may get a call this week, so remember the mission. Attention, cadets. It's time for the jackpot question. Yes, it's time to try to give away that hangar full of planes. Every week that our aviation history jackpot question isn't answered, another plane is put in the hangar for the lucky winner. Today, six planes are in the jackpot hangar, and today, two more cadets will be asked a question on aviation history. If one cadet answers the question, the planes are his. If they both know the answer, they'll divide the planes. Here's the jackpot question. Are you ready? Get in close. The Wright brothers are known as the fathers of flight. What town were they from? Where did they live when they invented and developed their first airplane? Can you tell me? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I, I beg your pardon? Was it Pennsylvania? No, I'm sorry, it wasn't Pennsylvania. They lived in Dayton, Ohio. Another week and the jackpot question wasn't answered. Next week there'll be seven planes. Seven planes in the jackpot hangar. You'll both get Jim Walker, ceiling walkers, though, and you'll have a lot of fun with them. Co-pilot Ferguson, our radar scope, tells me that lots of boys and girls want to join this squadron, but they don't know how. Tell them how easy it is, will you? I sure will, Uncle Ned. Boys and girls joining the squadron is easier than flying a cub. Here's all you have to do. Send a postcard with your name, age, address, and phone number on it to Uncle Ned, WMAQ, Chicago 54, Illinois. That's all it takes to make you an official member of the squadron and to get your name on our official phone list. Yes, just as soon as we get your card, we'll put your name on our phone list so you'll have a chance at the four phone calls we make to members each week. Remember, all it takes is a postcard with your name, age, address, and phone number on it, mailed to Uncle Ned, WMAQ, Chicago 54, Illinois. Get that card in the mail today so you'll be an official member by next Saturday. Okay, Uncle Ned, back to you for some hangar flying. Thank you, co-pilot Franklin Ferguson. Let's talk about an attack bomber used by the Navy, the Martin Muller. The Muller is a fast and powerful plane, and lots of Navy pilots are using them right now in Korea. The Muller is a single-seater. It only carries the pilot. It has a big 3,000-horsepower engine that drives a four-bladed prop. The Muller can cruise at 300 miles an hour. Now, that's a pretty good cruising speed, but listen to this. Its diving speed is over 500 miles an hour. The pilot has a bulletproof windshield, and bulletproof panels cover the sides and front of the cockpit. The Mahler is heavy. It weighs almost 30,000 pounds, but listen to the load it carries. Four 20-millimeter cannons, two in each wing, three big torpedoes, and 12 rockets. And besides all that, it carries enough gas to fly for 1,200 miles without stopping to refuel. Well, you can tell by now that the Mahler is a pretty big plane, and it is. It's 50 feet from wingtip to wingtip, and the fuselage is 41 and a half feet long. Now, let's point out the important things about the Mahler, the things I want you to remember so you can win some model planes. The Mahler carries just one person, the pilot. It has a 3,000-horsepower engine that turns a prop with four blades. The Mahler has a diving speed of more than 500 miles an hour. The windshield is bulletproof, and bulletproof panels protect the sides in front of the cockpit. The Mahler carries four 20-millimeter cannons, two in each wing, three big torpedoes, and 12 rockets. The plane is heavy. It weighs almost 30,000 pounds when it's loaded. It's 50 feet from wingtip to wingtip and 41 and a half feet from the prop to the end of the fuselage. Now, let's solo some Muller pilots. Co-pilot Ferguson send the first cadet down the line to this question. How fast is the diving speed of the Muller? Over 500 miles an hour. Over 500 miles an hour. You have the answer. You're a good smaller pilot. What's your name? Barry Hippert. Barry Hippert, a good steady member. Barry, where do you live? 5743 Winthrop. And how old are you, Barry? 11. And our executive officer, Dave Harrell, has a monogram speedy build Piper Cub for you. It's easy to build and easy to fly. And here's question number two. The Muller has a 3,000-horsepower engine that turns a prop with how many blades? Four blades. You're right, with four blades. Good job. What's your name? Avery Smith. Avery, how old are you? 
I'm 10 years old. And where do you live? 3750 Lakeshore Drive. And weren't you our executive officer a few weeks ago? Yeah. And you did a good job. And here's a fine plastic plane for you. It's a Hawk Spad. Hawk plastic planes are respected by model builders everywhere. And here's question number three. Where are the cannons located on the Mahler? Where are the cannons located on the Mahler? Can you tell me? Look right into the microphone and tell me. Can you? Can you tell me where the cannons are located? Well, I want to tell you, he's only about a three-year-old cadet, and he's trying, but I don't think he has the answer, so I'm going to give him a ceiling walker, a Jim Walker helicopter. Thank you very much for trying, little pilot. Do you have the answer? Can you tell me where the cannons are located on the Mueller? Two in each wing. You're right, two in each wing. Boy, you're a good pilot. What's your name? Charles Schilling. Charlie, where do you live? 8424 Parkview. Parkview here in Chicago. No, in Hollywood. I beg your pardon? In Hollywood. Oh, you live in Hollywood and you're here in Chicago on a vacation? Mm -hmm. Illinois, Hollywood, Illinois. Oh, Hollywood, Illinois, Mm -hmm. I see. And you're here in Chicago on a vacation? This is my birthday today. It is? Well, Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you answered that question because you're going to have a nice birthday present. Here's a fine plane for you. It's a Strombecker solid model F-94. Strombecker solids are built to exact scale. And here's our next question. The Mahler... Oh, oh, it's our NBC operator. Our next question will go to one of the cadets at home. Hello? Hello, this is Uncle Ned in the WMAQ Ready Room. Who's this? John Sheridan. Johnny, where do you live? 114 Jefferson Avenue, Janesville, Wisconsin. How old are you, Johnny? I'm glad to talk to you. And here's your question. I want you to answer it so that I can mail you a fine model airplane. Are you all set? Okay, here it comes. The Mahler is heavy when it's loaded. How much does it weigh? The Mahler is heavy when it's loaded. How much does it weigh? Johnny, you should see all the hands raised high in the ready room. 30,000 pounds. You're right. Johnny Yay! Sheridan of Gainesville, Wisconsin has the answer. And Johnny, we're going to mail you a model airplane this afternoon. I hope you build it and have a lot of fun with it. If you're ever in Chicago, stop into the ready room, will you? Okay, goodbye, Johnny. Boy, he's an eager cadet and he'll do a good job, too. And here's question number five. How far is it from wingtip to wingtip on the Muller? Fifty feet. You're right, fifty feet. Boy, tell me what your name is. James Sticker. What is it? James Sticker. Jim, how old are you? How old? Seven are you? years old. And where? Seven years old. You did a good job. And where do you live? What's your address? Thirty-two twenty-four North Central Park. Here in Chicago. I'm glad to see you. You win a Comet Structo Speed Belanca Cruiser, and Comet models are engineered with the same care real planes are. Here's question number six, and there's a good plane for the answer. What kind of protection is there around the cockpit? Oh, that's a little girl, a little <laughs> four-year-old. I'll bet she isn't over four years old. Can you tell me the answer to that? Can you tell me what kind of protection there is around the cockpit? Can you? Well, here, here is a little Jim Walker ceiling walker, a little helicopter for you, and thank you so much for trying. And here comes a cadet in a bright shirt. What kind of protection is there around the cockpit? There's um, bulletproof glass and... Um, You're right so far, bulletproof windshield. And... 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 What's around the cockpit? You know, don't you? Huh? Oh, I think you know. Sure, let's give it to him. A bulletproof windshield and bulletproof panels. Absolutely. All right, you got a fine airplane. Here's a monogram monocoupe. Monogram speedy built planes are known for simplified construction. Good job, you soloed like real Navy pilots. Taxi your maulers down the deck now, while co-pilot Franklin Ferguson invites everybody to the ready room. Say, that's a job I like, Uncle Ned, because it's always fun to see a ready room. Room full of cadets. You're all invited to come down whenever you can. You'll find the ready room on the 19th floor of the Merchandise Mart in the NBC studios in Chicago. The doors open at 8.30, and they open on fun and prizes for everyone. Even if you don't get to answer a question during the meeting, you'll still get a prize. Yes, sir Everybody gets a fine little F-74 jet glider and a big handful of good Curtis mints and fruit drops. Of course, if you're here at 8.30 sharp, you might be chosen to answer one of Uncle Ned's questions. And if you come up with the right answer, you'll win a swell model plane. Yes, we have fun and prizes for you every Saturday morning in the ready room, so come down and get your share. You're all invited. 
Okay, Uncle Ned, back to you. Thank you, co-pilot Ferguson. Pilots, here's something for you if your birthday is today. From all of us to all of you, whoever you are and wherever you are... If you were born today, May the 31st, you and one of America's greatest poets were born on the same day. Walt Whitman was born on May the 31st, 1819, in New York. He went to work in a newspaper office when he was a young boy, and then later became a school teacher. He started his great writings when he was teaching school, and his short stories and poems will be remembered forever. Walt Whitman was a great patriot. His poems and short stories preach the wonders of our country, and you can be proud that you and Walt Whitman were born on the same day. Now, Uncle Ned, it's story time. This is the story of Jim Bolsom, the kidnapped pilot. Jim Bolsom stood beside his aeroplane, admiring its new red paint job. The sound of running feet caused him to turn around, and when he did, he stared at the cold barrel of a thirty-eight that was being pushed into his chest. The man on the other end of the thirty-eight told Jim to get in the plane and fly him and his friend to Kansas City. Don't ask any questions. Just move and move fast. Jim glanced down at the glittering gun, then turned and crawled into the plane. The two men were close behind him. Jim hit the starter button, turned his radio on, and taxied out to the runway. Wild thoughts ran through Jim's mind. Who were these mean-looking men? Why did they have a gun? Why were they in a hurry to get to Kansas City? Jim's questions were answered when the radio broadcast a general alarm to all planes on the airport. Two men had just held up a bank downtown... They headed toward the airport, and it was believed they'd try to make a getaway in a plane. Jim went pale. The two men sitting in the seat behind him were the bank robbers. The robbers heard the broadcast, and the one with the thirty-eight pressed it against the back of Jim's neck and told him to hurry. No stalling. Get the plane in the air and head for Kansas City. Jim checked the engine at the end of the runway. It sounded perfect, too perfect. He wished with all his might that the engine would backfire and stop. The gun pressed harder into his neck. He quickly squared the plane away with the runway and pushed the throttle in. Jim's hands were trembling so badly he could hardly hold the stick. The gun moved away from his neck as he banked the plane in the direction of Kansas City. Jim squirmed in the seat. What did the men have in mind for him? Would they let him go free when he got them to Kansas City? Surely they wouldn't let him land at the airport. They'd make him land in the country, outside of town, perhaps in some farmer's field. Then what would they do? Shoot him and leave him? The man with the thirty-eight was like a mind reader. He gave Jim the answers just as though he'd asked the questions out loud. Jim was to pick out a smooth field on the edge of town, land and let the men out. They hadn't decided yet what they'd do with him. The men were silent as the miles skimmed by underneath them. Jim's mind was turning over as fast as the propeller. He'd been in tight spots before, but never in a mess like this. The more he thought, the braver he got. He had it figured out. Neither of the men knew how to fly. They planned to shoot him once they were on the ground, but they wouldn't dare shoot him in the air. If they did, the plane would crash and they'd be just as bad off as he was. Why couldn't he pick up the microphone when he got close to Kansas City and tell the tower he had two bank robbers in his plane? Tell them to have a squad of policemen beside the runway when he landed. He didn't think they'd dare shoot him if they were surrounded by policemen. On the other hand, maybe they'd hold him as hostage. The police wouldn't dare try to capture the men if they had a gun in Jim's back and threatened to shoot him if the police came near. The men could make another getaway, then take care of Jim whenever they felt like it. He threw the idea away as he mopped the sweat off his forehead. He might as well get to Kansas City as fast as he could and get it over with. He pushed the throttle all the way in. Far ahead, Jim could see the smoke of Kansas City. His time was almost up unless he could think of something drastic. The man with the gun leaned forward and told Jim to start looking for a smooth field and not to try any funny business. Jim turned sideways, looked directly into the muzzle of the gun and told the man he had no intention of landing in a field. He was going to fly into the airport, and what's more, he was going to call on the radio and tell them to have the police at the runway waiting for them. The man's cold eyes held Jim in a deadly stare. The gun moved up. The barrel looked as big as a wash tub. Jim saw the man's finger tighten on the trigger. The barrel wiggled. Then a shot grazed Jim's arm and plowed into the door. Through clenched teeth, the robber told Jim that was only a warning shot. The next one would be closer. Jim was mad. He jerked around and told the men to hand over the gun or he'd crash the plane and they'd all be dead. The men sneered. That made Jim really mad. 
He pushed the stick forward and pointed the nose for the ground. The plane picked up speed and soon was in a screaming dive straight for the ground. Jim held the stick with both hands. He'd come as close to the ground as he could, then pull up sharply. Maybe he could scare them into handing over the gun. Closer and closer he came to the ground. He looked around. The men were white and trembling, but they still held the gun on him. The ground was only 50 feet away when Jim came back on the stick. He climbed sharply, then pulled the plane on its back in a loop and dived again for the ground. He yelled over the roar of the engine for the men to shoot him if they were going to. He dared them to shoot. He pointed his plane at the side of a hill and bore down on it. The hill loomed big. Jim saw the men cover their faces. He skimmed over the top of the hill, just missing it by inches. He held the plane steady for a minute, turned to the men and told them to hand over the gun. Again they sneered, and the gun was pushed deep into the back of his neck. Another dive, this time for a clump of trees. The plane was going at full speed, and the bushy treetops were just ahead. This should do it. He'd fly the plane right through the leafy branches, and if the men didn't toss the gun over to him, then they never would. The plane screamed, then lurched as the prop cut leaves and small branches off the top of the tree. Jim started to pull up, and the gun landed in his lap. His sweaty hands grabbed the gun, and he pushed it into his belt. He shot a glance back at the men, and they were frozen with fright. Two tough bank robbers so scared they couldn't even talk. Jim called Kansas City on his radio and told them to have a squad car at the airport when he landed. He was bringing in a couple of fellas who, like all bad men, were tough and brave only when they had a gun and had someone else at a disadvantage. Jim made a smooth three-point landing and taxied over to the waiting squad car where he unloaded the whimpering robbers. Jim pointed the nose of his plane down the runway, and the kidnapped pilot took off for home. Well, Uncle Ned, I guess that story proves who's brave and who isn't. Well, we've got some cadets here ready to solo, and here comes the first one down the runway now. Send him right over to this question. What color was Jim's plane? Red. Red, you're right, a good little cadet pilot. Tell me your name. George Farina. George, how old are you? Eight. You're eight years old, and where do you live, George? 446 North Orleans. Here in Chicago. You did a good job, and here's a Hawk Plastic Supermarine. A good plane for you. And here's question number two. What had the men in Jim's plane done? What had the men done? What were the men? Bad men. Bad men, that's right, but what had the bad men done? They robbed the bank. You're right, sure. They robbed the bank. Well, oh, I'm glad you answered that. What's your name? Frank Buchan. Frankie, how old are you? Six. Six years old, and where do you live? 144 West 46 Place. Here in Chicago. Good, and here's a plane you can have fun with. A Comet Structo Speed Balanca. And here's question number three. Where did they tell Jim to take them? In Kansas City. That's right. They told Jim to take them to Kansas City. You're a good pilot. What's your name? Michael Charty. Mike, how old are you? Fourteen. And what's your address? 2437 West Arlington. Here in Chicago. And here's a popular plane for you, a Strombecker solid model DC-6. And here is question number four. Oh, our operator again, our NBC operator has another cadet on the line. Hello? Hello, this is Uncle Ned in the WMAQ ready room. Who's this? Harlan Nuss of Lena, Illinois. Harlan, how old are you? You're nine years old. Here's your question. I want you to answer it so I can mail you a fine model plane. Are you all set, Harlan? Have you got any help? You're doing this all alone. You're going to solo. All right, here it comes. The men didn't tell Jim what they had done or who they were. How did he find out? Harlan Nuss from Lena, Illinois. How did Jim first find out what the men had done and who they were? What? Well, after they got in the plane, that's right, then what happened, Harlan? What happened after they got in the plane? Rem can you tell me? He was taxiing out to the airport, do you remember? He hit the starter button and taxied out to the runway, then what happened? Can you tell me, Harlan? Yeah, sure, the radio told him. That's right, they broadcasted general alarm. Good job. Harlan Nuss from Lena, Illinois. 
boy, Harlan, I'm glad we got that so I can send you a fine model plane. If you're ever in Chicago, Harlan, stop down to the ready room, will you? Okay. I'll bet he'll have the best model airplane in Lena, Illinois. And here's our next question. What were they going to make Jim do when they got close to Kansas City? Make him land in a small field. In a farmer's field. That's right. You're right. Make him land in a farmer's field and let them out. What's your name? Dave, t- talk right into the microphone. How Dave old are you? Uh, 11. And where do you live? 614 North Angles. And you in a big Strombecker solid model B-24. Now, you won't need any special tools to put the Strombecker models together. And here is question number six. What does the story prove about robbers and bad men? Can you tell me a little, lady pilot? What does the story prove about robbers and bad men? Can you tell me? No. You can't tell me? You're going to get a little helicopter, a little Jim Walker ceiling walker, and here comes a fellow that I think can tell me. Can you tell me? What does the story prove about robbers and bad men? They're only brave with a gun in their hand. That's right. It's fellows like Jim that are really brave. Good. What's your name? What's your name? Alan Lundquist. And how old are you, Alan? I'm 12. And where do you live? 947 Windsor. Well, you just won a monogram speedy built P-40 Warhawk. A good plane for you. Well, that's it. That's all the regular solo flying. Now it's time to fly the fire, baby. If a cadet from the ready room can tell me the five qualifications for membership in the squadron from memory... He'll win a U-Control Fire Baby. Co-pilot Franklin Ferguson will have to have an old-time member for this flight because it'll take a pretty good pilot. Do you have a cadet who can do the job? This fellow wants to try, Uncle Ned. He wants that Fire Baby. And his name is Bill Simmons, and he lives at 1226 Gunnison in Chicago. He's a good member, and I'll bet he does the job. Good luck, Bill Simmons. All okay. right, Bill. Oh, wait a minute, Bill. Oh, boy, you're going to do it. Go right ahead. Start right. Obey stands authority. Observe the rules of hell. Promote safety and there and on the ground. Keep yourself clean and alert. Accomplish every mission. Boy, that was the... Stay right here, Bill. I want to talk to you. Now, look right into the microphone and tell me something. How old are you? Seven. You're seven years old. How long have you been a member of the squadron? Only once. Oh, no, how long have you been a member? How long have you had your membership card? About a month. About a month. You did a fine job. Where do you live again? 1226 Connison. And where do you go to school? Our Lady of Lords. Well, you flew like a test pilot. Now, here's your Jim Walker fire, baby. It's complete with a 795 engine, control handle and control wires, aluminum hub wheels, and a flashy red paint job. The fire baby is practically built for you. You can have it in the air within 10 minutes, and you'll be the best seven-year-old pilot in your neighborhood. Well, that's all for this Saturday, cadets. I sure hope you'll attend the meeting next Saturday, either in the ready room or at home by your radio. Be good, kids, until we get together again next Saturday morning. And until then, this is Uncle Ned speaking for the entire crew and saying so long, pilots! Remember, boys and girls, all it takes is a postcard to become an official member of the squadron. Just write your name, age, address, and phone number on the back of a postcard and send it to Uncle Ned, WMAQ, Chicago 54, Illinois. That makes you an official member, and your name will go on our phone list. You'll get an official membership card, too. You're welcome in the ready room whenever you can come down. If you can't be with us in person next Saturday, be sure your radio dial is at 670 at 9 o'clock for another exciting meeting of Uncle Ned This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.